Hello, brothers and sisters. How are you doing? I hope you're doing fine. So this is another great day that um, we'll be speaking uh, concerning uh, <laughs> uh, the Seventh Day Adventist, you know. And uh, these guys, they are really, really, they know the Bible. So you, <laughs> you have to be very sharp as you're trying to argue with them, especially when it comes to some of the things that they really believe. And um, also another thing is that uh, you, when you're dealing with someone who knows the Bible, because these guys, they really read the Bible. But now the problem is not only reading the Bible. The problem is what exactly do they believe in? Because remember, even Satan himself, he knows the Bible and he knows each and everything what the Bible is talking about. That's why Satan was... Uh, uh, was, uh, you know, trying to deceive Jesus uh, uh, at, at the wilderness using the Bible. I, I, are you seeing that? So I'm not saying these guys are Satanist or anything, but uh, we have to rightly divide the word of truth. We really have to debunk everything which is not true in the Bible, and we have to follow the sound doctrine. Okay, sorry, I think I had muted myself here. <laughs> it's just funny, I don't know how I did it. But um, so you can just sit down and say that uh, you will do whatever you think the Bible says and not what exactly it talks about. Because uh, Satan is very, very much cunning and uh, he will always try to imitate and try to say some things which even the Bible is not talking about. And uh, we have to be very, very keen about this. Let me see if I went on or I'm offline. Let me just check. Yes, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. I was trying to check if I was uh, on on Facebook. I actually go live on Facebook and then I uh, post the video on YouTube later on. So now, as I was saying, we have to check very well concerning sound doctrine. The Bible talks about you must have a sound doctrine. It's not just about have any doctrine out there. Just the Bible is not a salad whereby you just pick what you want. I, I need some grapes. I need some oranges. I put whatever I want. No, the Bible has to be rightly divided. You know, you have to understand exactly because the whole Bible is not for us. You know, it is for us to learn, but it is not directed to us. Each and everything in the Bible is not directed to us. For, for example, the, there is a place in the Bible where God commands a certain man to build an ark, you know, to build an ark. There's rain which is going to come and it will sweep off the whole world. Now, is that message to us? Are we supposed to go and build an ark right now? No, that is a message for us to learn, but not direct to us. Again, uh, God directed another man to go and, uh, you know, sacrifice his, his son, that is Abraham. Now, that is a command in the Bible. Is it directed to us directly? No, it is for us to learn something. Okay, so as, uh, as uh, we are looking on the Bible, we should see and ask ourselves where, which point are we in the Bible? You see, back in the days, people could, uh, could have their sins covered by sacrificing an animal. You go and sacrifice a, a lamb, an animal, a goat, and then you shed their blood, and then you know that your sins are covered in the time of Moses. Is that how we are saved now? Is that how we do away with our sins now? No, that was for us to learn. And that's why it is in the Bible. So likewise, we should ask ourselves, where are we in the map of God, in the story of God in the Bible? And now we understand that we are in the time of the Apostle Paul. Now we are during the church age. And this church age will end with the rapture, okay? So after the rapture, then the church age will be done. So now, having looked at this, and we understand that the Bible is not all written to us, but it is written for us to learn, you know, because everything is profitable, you know, in the scripture. And it helps us to be able to understand God even much more. It helps us to understand what God is trying to say in different ways, because some of the things that we have seen in the past in the Bible, they're also trying to foreshadow what will come in the future. So now, when I talk about the Seventh Day Adventism and what they believe. Now, first we have to understand that uh, uh, some of the things that they believe, yeah, 
they're okay. Like for example, they believe, uh, you know, uh, they believe in the Trinity. They believe uh, a couple of things that we all agree with each other, but they have some things which are really creepy. And these are the things that I need us to go through and we be able to understand what exactly is wrong with the doctrine of the seventh day, you know, so that we can be able to debunk and know what is really true and what is not true. And everything that I'm going to speak today, it is in the Bible. I'm not going to speak my own words. I'm not going to say my own things, but I'm speaking exactly what the Bible says. Now, first and foremost, uh, the seventh day, they make a huge deal about the seventh day, you know, what they call the Sabbath. They make a huge deal about that. And uh, they also make a huge deal about diet and the law of Moses, that we really have to keep the law of Moses and that we have we are supposed to abstain from some foods. We are supposed to go away from this food and go away from that food and things like that. And they say, uh, don't eat that, don't do this. First and foremost, before even I continue, let me show you what the Bible talks about food uh -huh. so that you can understand, are they even in the initial parts, are we together or are we not together? Let me show you what the Bible says concerning uh, our food and that. Now, the Bible says in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times shall, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, okay? Those are some of the things that the people will be falling away to, trying to tell people, don't marry. Another thing, and commanding to abstain from meats. You see, they're commanding people to abstain from some foods, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe and know the truth. Are you seeing? This is one of the things that the uh, seventh day adventists they teach that don't eat certain kinds of foods and the bible is saying no no these are called the doctrines of devils because everything that you receive with thanksgiving it is profitable for you enjoy and uh, continue eating so that one we already debunk the same it's 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 not in accordance to the bible that was uh, something which was spoken back in the time of moses the time of the law and the, as we know right now we are not in the time of the law the law of moses is done jesus is the end of the law right now we follow jesus we follow him uh, focusing on the cross, not focusing on the angle of keeping the law. Are you seeing uh, the point there? So another thing is that the, the Seventh-day Adventists, they believe that Satan is a scapegoat who will take all the sins of mankind in the lake of fire. You know, at the last day, it's like all the sins will be poured on Satan. And then every other person, any person who was a sinner, he will be annihilated. You know, it's like he'll evaporate and, you know, he'll be finished and die. So only the good guys will be able to remain. Are you seeing that's a lie? Because uh, the person who took all of our sins is not Satan. Jesus took all our sins at the cross. He took all our sins. God poured all his wrath on Jesus Christ, all the wrath that he was supposed to give on us. And he poured it on his son, Jesus Christ, at the cross. So Jesus became the scapegoat. He took every sin of every human being. And at the cross, after he died, just before he died, he said, it is finished because I've already finished the whole thing of taking all of your sins. Now, what you need to do is just to believe in me and then you can be saved. Are you seeing the picture here? So now them saying that Satan will take all the sins of every, every sinner in the world during the last day. Uh, and then, uh, you know, he'll be burnt there with all those. And then the good guys will live only. The others will annihilate. Then that's, that's, that's uh, not true. Okay. So when you look at uh, the doctrine of the SDA, they are somehow like Jehovah's Witness. They have some things. They have a lot of similarity with the Jehovah's Witnesses, okay? And I'm going to show you this. And of course, I'll do another video one of these fine days and explain uh, exactly concerning what the Jehovah's Witness also believe so that you can be able to understand. And my goal today, and even in the days ahead, when I'll be talking about different religions and what they believe, my goal is not to mock some religions or say this one is good than this. It's, it's to 
edify one another so that we can be able to see what are you believing in, you know? The Bible says, test all spirits, you know? Be, be someone who can test and say, what Keith is teaching, it is true or is not true. What these people are teaching, it is true or is not true. Be a Berean. You see, the Bible tells us that the, the people of Berea, they were Jews of a noble character. They were good people because they searched the scriptures every day to see is everything which Paul is saying, is it really true? Go and read Acts 17, 11. They were people of a noble character. They used to check every day and see this one is true. Yes, that is true. And anytime that they find something is not true, they will always, they're always careful about that. And they made sure that everything they hear even if it was from the Apostle Paul, they checked the, the scriptures every day. We are living at a time that people don't want to check the scriptures. They just want to argue and say, no, 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 Keith, don't talk about that. Don't talk, don't touch the anointed. Don't touch. Who told you that everybody's anointed? You see, right now, there are things that we call doctrines of devils. And unless you check it with the Bible here very clearly, you'll be led astray and you'll be confused. And that's why I'm here talking about different religions and what they believe so that you can do your own conclusion and understand. And, uh, you know, God will be able to reveal some things to you. So today is not, I'm not after hitting of, or, or, on any religion or trying to pull down the seventh day. I know some of them are really my friends, but my uh, real thing here is to expose the evil schemes of the devil so that you can be able to open up your eyes and understand what the truth is, okay? Now, first and foremost, let's start with their strong points. Now, one of the things that... Um, the seventh day they really believe in is the, you know, they believe on keeping the Sabbath, you know, they keep the Sabbath, keep the Sabbath, keep the Sabbath, their, their, their whole um, uh, religion is based on keeping the Sabbath, that's why they are called the Sabbath day, you know, and uh, you, you may ask yourself, why keep the Sabbath, is there any command that you're commanded to keep the Sabbath? Now, these are the verses that they go to, and uh, this is the, 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 the test, the text that they used to prove that Sabbath day uh, was honored by God and that everybody should keep the Sabbath. Now, they force this on people. Let's go to Genesis 2.2. 2. Genesis 2.2. 2. It says, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. You see there, they are talking about God rested on the seventh day. That's what the Bible is saying. Now, let me show you the trick where they come uh, through here. And God blessed the seventh day. Here, they say, and God blessed the seventh day. Wow, you see, he blessed the day. So you have to keep it. Now, hold on, hold on, and sanctified it. Because that, uh, that in it, he had rested from all the work which God created and made. Are you seeing? So these guys, they take that and they say, you see, God rested and he sanctified that day. Now we are supposed to keep it. Now, hold on, hold on. Let me show you first all the verses that they go to, and then we can debunk them one by one. And we see the context of what the Bible is trying to mean, because without understanding the Bible and rightly dividing, you will be lost, my friend. You'll just be reading a verse and then you go and directly and you don't understand what it means. So it's very important to say this. Another thing, they claim that Sabbath did not start with Moses. You see, when you when you meet with the Seventh Day Adventists, they will tell and you tell them, no, we are not supposed to keep the law. The law was for Moses. Now we are living under grace. They'll tell you, no, 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 no. The, the Sabbath day is exceptional from the laws. Eh? It did not start with Moses. It is started in the time of the Garden of Eden with Adam there and God, you see? because they will explain and show you some examples. But now, let's see where they, 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 they always try to talk this, and they say that it started back then. Let's see in the book of Exodus 16, 23. Exodus 16, uh, verse 23, it says, and he said unto them, this is that which the Lord had said. Now, this is Moses, okay, Moses speaking. And he said unto them, this is that which the Lord had said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which uh, uh, bake that which you will bake today, and seeth that will seed, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So they say, God is saying that the, tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. You see, so 
Moses is like, uh, they say, Moses is trying to tell people, you see, this is the old Sabbath that we already told back then in Genesis 2.2. 2. Now, let's continue. First, let's check this verse. The verse below explains that uh, they, they try to explain that this verse, the law was to be kept even from the beginning. Now, let's check uh, verse 28. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long, uh, how long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? So now they say, okay, you see, they are refusing to keep the commandments, which are already commanded from the beginning. That is exactly what they say. And verse 29, see for that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he giveth you on the sixth day, the bread of two days, abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So these are some of the verses that they use so, so, so much to explain. And another verse that they use before I come on debunking each and every uh, verse that we are reading is uh, Exodus 28. Exodus 20 verse 8, uh, where the Ten Commandments, whereby one of them says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Look at that word which is being used. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And then they'll tell you, okay, you see that Sabbath, you have to keep it holy. Hold on, hold your horses. The final verse that they use so much to try and confuse you, it is in the book of Mark. Mark 2.27. Now let's see what uh, Mark 2.27 says. And this will be a very interesting uh, uh, sermon today, whereby I'll be speaking about these things. Eh? So at least be, be very much keen to be able to understand what I'm talking about here. Now Mark 2.27, it says, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. You see, so everybody will say, uh, uh, uh. you see what Jesus said himself, that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So they will try to say the other laws of Moses were made for a certain, uh, you know, purpose. But this Sabbath itself was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Now, having heard that, now let's start debunking these verses one by one and seeing exactly what was their context. What exactly did they mean? Let's go and start with the Genesis 2 verses 2. And we see what exactly was the Bible talking about when it talks about uh, the Sabbath, the seventh day. Actually, it's not even Sabbath. You're going to, you're going to uh, see something here. Genesis 2, 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that, that in it he had rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Okay, now this is not a command. And God did not command anything to Adam. He just explained what he did. God explained and he said, I rested on that day. The seventh day I rested and I sanctified this. So did he command Adam that he should observe this day? No, there is no place where he commanded Adam. Now, another thing, let's ask ourselves. First, who wrote the book of Genesis? <laughs> it's Moses. And uh, if it's Moses, Moses Definitely when he's addressing this, he's also trying to elaborate something which would come at the time of the law. Remember, Moses is the carrier, the guy behind the law. And also, remember, Adam himself, he honored God every day. Every day, Adam was honoring God. Because he was where? In the Garden of Eden from Monday to Sunday. He was honoring God every day. But now remember something, Jews, the Jews were always so busy working and doing several things because remember the Jews at that time when Moses was giving the, the Ten Commandments and the other laws, they were not in the Garden of Eden where they have all the time to sit down and praise God each and every day. They, they, they had, God had to create one specific day when they would remember him, okay? Are you seeing this? Are you seeing the picture whereby God had to create one day? Because now that time, People are busy, they are farming, they are doing this and they are doing that. So it is very possible for them to forget honoring God and, uh, and uh, praising God and praying to God. So God made one day 
and he created it and put it within the laws so that now people can be able to honor God and keep this day to pray to God. You see, this, this Sabbath day never started from the time of Adam. Are you saying it's not a commandment which started back then? It is started with Moses. Okay, so this he knew would happen even from the beginning. So God called Moses to fix about that. And that's why when Moses was writing the book of Genesis, he, he mentioned about that, which God already inspired. And he knew that one day, one time, I will be able to do something concerning the day of the Sabbath. Okay, so something else that uh, I need you to understand here is that... Uh, the Seventh Day Adventists they try to translate the the word uh, the the Seventh Day here, and they why do they call themselves Sabbath Day keepers and also Seventh Day? So Sabbath and Seventh Day they are two different things. You must understand this: Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath, and the the Seventh Day they are two different things. So they try to say Seventh Day and Sabbath to confuse people so that people now can come here and they say, you see, it is still the Sabbath. The, the seventh day is spoken uh, of in Genesis and also is the seventh day in uh, where? In, uh, with the, the law of Moses. So they try to make them seem as if they co correlate, but it's not true. The Sabbath and the seventh day, they are two very independent things. So if you're keeping the Sabbath, then it doesn't mean the Sabbath is what the seventh day is. So this is just a major translation that they, uh, what we call um, the transliteration. You know how you can transliterate something? That's exactly what they did. Now, we see in Exodus 16, let's go there to Exodus 16, uh, Exodus 16, 23, where it speaks about that, they should observe this Sabbath. Look at this. And he said unto them, this is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath. You see, Moses is not talking about the holy seventh day. He's talking about the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that you will bake today and see that you'll see and uh, what will remain overlay for yourself to be kept till the morning. So Moses here is talking about the Sabbath. He's not talking about the seventh day. What does seventh day mean? The seventh day, it was the day that God rested. But this day of Sabbath, Sabbath and seventh day, they are two separate things that you have to understand. So first we have to ask ourselves, who was God speaking to? And he said unto them, okay, this is what the Lord has said. So God, God was speaking to who? He was speaking to Moses. So if God is speaking to Moses, it is during what time? The time of the law, okay? It is time of the law. So most God was not speaking to Adam and telling him, remember to keep the Sabbath. No, God did not have any instruction to Adam concerning the Sabbath. He spoke this to Moses, okay? So this is proving that the Sabbath day, it is a part of the law, okay? Now, we have not seen anywhere where uh, Sabbath is mentioned during the time of uh, 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 we are not seen anywhere where Adam is mentioned in the Exodus, you know, in the book of Exodus. We are not seen where, anywhere where uh, the Bible is saying like it was in the time of Adam or what your forefathers did and your forefathers kept. You see, when the Bible wants to remind us something concerning which was continuing, it will tell us, keep this as your forefathers or it was done before by so and so. There will be a mention of who you know, the, the whole thing originated from. Like the way we always hear the law of Moses, this and this of this and this. Like the sacrifice made by Adam, I mean, the, by Cain and Abel. We always hear the sacrifice uh, made by Abraham. This and this, the, the ark of, uh, the, the, the Noah's ark. You see, Bible will always go back and explain where the original uh, thing started from. But you see, with Sabbath, we don't get that with Adam. We don't see the Sabbath which was kept by Adam. There's nothing like that. So it is only being spoken uh, by Moses here. And the word remember comes because of this verse, the 1623 verse. Remember, why? Because God was trying to tell them because he had already given, 
He had told them that there are some laws, the, the commandments that you're supposed to keep. And he's telling them, remember those commandments. Why is he talking about that? Remember the commandments. Because it was a part of the law. The Sabbath was a part of the law of Moses. And of course, we will see that right now, we are not in the law of Moses. We are in another different uh, dispensation. You see? So keeping the Sabbath is, is, is something that you cannot really explain where it comes from. You'll be confused by a lot of doctrines here and there, but I'll, but I'll debunk this so well as we continue. Now, the other verse that I want to debunk so well is the uh, Mark, Mark 2.27, Mark 2.27. This is another verse that they use so much to try and explain and say, you see, you see, you see what Jesus is saying here, that this, we have to keep it. Mark 2, 27, he says, and he said unto them, this is Jesus, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Now, these people, they'll tell you, you see, this is an exceptional um, a thing that you have to keep. The Sabbath is not for, you know, it is man for the Sabbath, no Sabbath for the man. I, I, are you seeing that? And uh, they continue in verse 28. Therefore, the son of man is Lord also of the Sabbath. But now, having heard that, this even makes it much more easier to refute their claim. Because of what? Let's see. Let's see 100% the context, the context of what Jesus was talking about here from verse 23 and it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the sabbath day and his disciples began as they went to pluck on the ears of corn and the pharisees said unto him behold why do they do this on sabbath day which is not is which is not uh, lawful you see so looking at this jesus himself is not even paying attention to the sabbath he's allowing his disciples to work on a day of sabbath and to do things on the time of Sabbath. You even remember another story where Jesus healed someone on the Sabbath, which is a type of work. Was Jesus not trying to tell people that um, now I'm coming to change the laws. I'm coming to remove all these obstacles, which is all about keep this law, keep that law, keep that law, keep that law. And now I want to show you that I am the end of the law. I am the end of these laws that we are always doing each and every day. Are you seeing the picture here? Are you understanding? Are you seeing that Jesus himself, he was the first one to do away with this, <laughs> with even looking, uh, 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 observing the Sabbath? And yet these people, they will try to tell you that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So we have to keep it. But they don't look at the context. If you don't look at the context, you'll always be confused about what the Bible says. And you will think it means one thing over the other. All right. So meaning that Jesus is greater than the Sabbath itself. So right now we are not supposed to follow the law itself, but we are supposed to follow Jesus who is greater than even the law. So if you're following and you're putting on Sabbath as your major way of, uh, you know, uh, like these guys, they also, they also try to say that uh, uh, worshiping on Sabbath is also an added value to your salvation in some way. So if you don't keep the Sabbath, you are, you're sinning and probably might go, uh, you know, you might um, be in the wrong ways with God and you might go to hell. I, I don't know if they believe in hell or, or what. Eh? But uh, you see, Jesus himself, he told us that he's the Lord of the Sabbath and he told us Follow me. Forget about all these things. And Jesus himself healing people on a Sabbath and also telling his disciples to go and collect corn on a Sabbath day and not speaking anything against that is a real proof that Jesus was trying to tell people, forget looking at the laws of Moses. Forget all these laws. Follow me. I am the one with the main law, the law of Christ, the law of love. When you do this, you have already fulfilled all the other laws. Are you seeing uh, the picture? And that's why even in the uh, Exodus 16, 23, it, it tells us that the Holy Sabbath was unto the Lord. Okay. It was the Sabbath unto the Lord, meaning it was the day, his day, the day of God, you know? So if Jesus himself he says, the Sabbath is mine, and he has told you, continue working, go to the farm and do whatever you have to do. Bring that person, I have to heal him on a Sabbath. What does he tell us? He tells us, forget observing that. I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Focus on me now. Forget the laws of Moses. Forget every other thing behind there. I am above the law. Are you seeing what the, uh, the Bible is trying to say here? 
Now, another thing you may ask yourself, so are we not supposed to keep the laws? Are we not supposed to follow the laws of Moses? Now, are we not supposed to keep the laws or what is wrong? What, you know, all those kind of things. This is what Jesus told us. In uh, Matthew, Matthew 22, uh, 37, Jesus told us, and Jesus said unto him, you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments uh, hang all the law and the prophets. So Jesus, he said, when you love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and everything that you have, and you love your brother as you love yourself, you've already fulfilled the whole law. So you don't have to keep some Sabbath. You don't have to keep all these things. You don't have to follow some kind of uh, uh, people telling you, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this. You have to eat some uh, kinds of foods and others you don't have to eat. You, don't, you, you have to make sure that this, remember what Paul said, that one man decides to uplift one day above the other, another one raises another day above the other, or another one raises all days above you know, one or another one, and all are justified. If you say, Monday will be my days for worshiping, I am justified. If you say, I will be worshiping God in every day, you are justified. If you say, I'll worship God on a Saturday, you're justified. You say, I'll worship God on a Sunday, you're justified. But don't try to put everyone on a box and to tell them that you have to worship on a Saturday, Jesus himself, he broke all that and he told his disciples, go and collect corn, go into the field and, you know, collect what you're supposed to collect, go and farm, do whatever you have to do. And when the Pharisees were asking, those are your disciples, why are they working on a Sabbath? Jesus said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. So forget what I'm doing. This is my feast. This is my time. The, I am the Lord of, I'm above the Sabbath. So follow me, forget following those things. And Jesus went and healed, healed someone who was sick on a Sabbath day. He did away with that and tried to show people, why are you following these kind of things and forgetting my whole, you know, if you keep the commandments of God and you say, I'll keep the commandments, I'll keep the commandments and you stumble on one, what does the Bible say? Whosoever keepeth all commandments and stumbles on one. Okay, I don't know if I have the verse here. Uh, James 2.10. Let me show you what the Bible says. If you're there saying, I, I, I'll be keeping this commandment so that at least I'm, I'm good, I'm better than the other people. Now, let me show you what the Bible says. James 2.10. It says, for whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point is guilty of all. So if you say, I'm going to keep the Sabbath, but then you're still lying, you're still uh, being corrupt, you're still stealing from people, you're still doing this, but you're saying, I'm so good on the Sabbath, but uh, I, these are the things, I, I'm very good on Sabbath, but I, I lied yesterday a little bit, I, I stole something, I, I was, uh, I, I was uh, you know, adulterer somewhere, I, I killed someone, I did, because the Bible says, if you hate your brother, from your heart, you've already killed him. So how many times do we get offended by our brothers and our sisters and people around? And even right now, I'm sure there are some people who are getting offended and others are saying, Keith, what is this that you're telling us? And uh, you, I'm, I'm, somebody's getting offended. You have already killed. So the Bible says, if you keep the whole law and you offend in one of the laws, then you have offended in all of them. But Jesus says, you don't have to do this law stuff. Forget the law stuff. Just follow me. Love God with all your heart and soul, uh, mind and soul, and love your brother as you love yourself. With these two, you have already fulfilled everything. Because I came to this, I came, uh, he, he, Jesus said that I am the end of the law. And that one he showed us very well, trying to tell his servants, go and work on a day of a Sabbath. So forget those laws of Moses, forget those laws back uh, that in the time and follow me. I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Are you seeing the picture here? I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. And also another thing that I like to debunk this whole story about uh, uh, the Sabbath is, let's go to the book of Nehemiah. 
Nehemiah, let me show you in the book of Nehemiah, it is says something here that you need absolutely to check and uh, to understand. Uh, Nehemiah, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? The book of Nehemiah, yes. The book of Nehemiah 9.14, see what it says concerning uh, <laughs> 9.14, and we'll read to 15. It says, and made us known unto them thy holy Sabbath. You see, the Bible is talking about God making them known the holy Sabbath and the command and the commanders them precepts, statutes, and the laws by the hand of Moses, their servant. So God is making known the Sabbath, the holy Sabbath. Through Moses. So if God is making the Sabbath to be known through Moses, it means people did not know about the Sabbath. So if you say the Sabbath was there uh, from the beginning as the seventh day in the time of creation, and it was being observed by Adam, and of course it started back then, then why is the Bible saying that he made it known the day of the Sabbath through Moses? It means this is the law of Moses, okay? And gave us them bread from heaven, uh, for their hunger and brought us forth water for them out of the rock for their thirst and promised them that they should go in possess land which thou hast sworn to give them. You see what the Bible is saying here. So it explains these are part of the laws of Moses and is explaining so clearly, so, so clearly that the this Sabbath thing was made known through Moses. So it is a part of the law. And if you're keeping it, then you're keeping, you're still keeping the laws the laws of Moses, and Jesus is the end of the law for everyone who believes, as the Bible tells us. So if you're keeping the law of Moses, then uh, you're still lost out there. You're still confused out there, and you're following something which is not in your dispensation. If you're keeping the law, then you must be a Jew. You must be a Jew. And uh, <laughs> If you're a Jew, then it means uh, tell us which which one is your tribe. Are you a Levite? Are you Judah from the tribe of uh, Benjamin? Wh which tribe are you if you're really a Jew? You see? And if you're following the Judaism and you're following uh, <laughs> the old uh, covenants, co commands of Moses, then it means you're not under grace because you can be under grace and be at the law <laughs> at the same time. So you're trying to save yourself with your own righteousness. You're trying to save yourself with your own knowledge of how uh, your own righteousness. And the Bible says our righteousness is like filthy rags unto God. When God looks at our righteousness, you are trying to be so good. I've not stolen. I've not uh, killed anyone. I've not done this. God looks at it and just says, I don't want to look at you. It's filthy rags unto me. And God tells us, let's use the righteousness of Jesus. Let's wear Jesus Christ himself. Because the moment you get saved by grace, you pick righteousness of Jesus and you impart it on yourself. And now that is what makes you be right with God. The Bible tells us that Jesus himself, he reconciled us with the Father. We were not reconciled by keeping the law. If, if uh, it's keeping the law, I don't know if we could have gone anywhere. We could not have, you see, there's something that uh, the, the seventh day they speak about. And they say, the Bible says that Jesus did not come to, you know, did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Okay. Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Now, if Jesus came to fulfill the law, how did Jesus fulfill the law? Ask yourself that question. Then how did Jesus fulfill the law? Jesus fulfilled the law by being born sinless and he lived all his life without sinning even once until his death at the cross. And after that, he was able to be said, 100% this guy has fulfilled the whole law. He has done nothing because the Bible has already told us if you keep the whole law and stumble on one, you have already broken all of them. Now tell me, if you're a Seventh-day Adventist out there and you're saying, I am trying to keep the law also. You see, Jesus did not uh, destroy the law. He came and fulfilled the law. So we are supposed to keep it. Tell me, were you born sinless? I, have you, are you one person who has never sinned from beginning till where you are? How many times have you sinned? How many times have you done wrong things? How many times have you lied? How many times have you hated your brother? How many times have you stolen something from someone? 
how, how, how many? You're not keeping any law. So the law will not get you to heaven. The law will not get you to heaven. And there are some people who say, you know, I've been saved by grace. I've been saved by grace. So, but then I have to keep a part of the law. I have to keep the law of Moses. I, I have to make sure that uh, I do not do this, do not do that. Let me ask you, if your focus is on how good you keep the law, then it means Christ died for nothing. If your focus is on how I'm keeping the law, how good I am in keeping the, the commandments of Moses, the whole law of Moses. Remember, the law of Moses is not only 10 commandments. It is 613 laws in the first five books of the Bible. The, there are 613 laws. How many have you kept today? How many have you broken today? So if you're keeping the 613 laws, then man... You should not even be living on this earth because this earth is so evil. Everything that you see is evil. You're walking like this. You see a, a, a lady who is naked. You, b, b, two minutes, you're looking at her like this. The next thing you realize, you've already broken one law because that's already uh, immorality. According to God, you've already slept with her according to God. So if you're saying you're keeping the whole law, then it's very, very unlikely. Probably you're living in another earth. Right now, the only way you can keep the whole law is by taking Christ, what he fulfilled, what Jesus fulfilled, and impart it on yourself. What Jesus fulfilled, you put it on yourself, and, and that is what can save you. Your own righteousness cannot save you even one inch. You cannot be saved by keeping the law. Because Christ is the end of the law. Let me show you Romans 10, 4. What does the Bible tell us about the law? Okay, Romans 10, 4. Let's see. What does it say? Romans 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. So if you believe in Jesus, then where does the law apply? So if you're trying to keep the Sabbath, I'm trying to keep this and this. I'm trying to be so good on this and this and you're putting on yourself some draconian uh, laws that you cannot even, <laughs> that even the children of Israel could not keep, and you, you're there, and you're saying, I want to keep these laws. How are you going to keep them and get to heaven? It's not possible. It's not possible even one inch. You're going to fail on them every day. The only way you can see heaven is by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing which can get you to heaven. Nothing else. Are you understanding my point? And that's why, uh, the, um, let's see, Paul in the book of Galatians 3 verses 1. Let's see what Paul told these people. Paul tells them, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Now I may say, Oh, foolish people who are keeping the law, who has bewitched you that you should obey, you should not obey the truth, that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. You're not seeing Jesus being crucified. You're looking at the law of Moses. You cannot, you cannot uh, be married to Jesus and you're still dating Moses. It can't work. You have to choose Am I on Moses' side or am I on Jesus' side? Because both of them, they are testaments. There's the Old Testament and the New Testament. And both testaments, they are affected by blood. You remember when Moses was given the law, the, the, the law by God, he came and he read the law to everyone. And they, after that, they killed an animal and sprinkled blood on those books and on the people to, to signify that this blood it is, it is giving um, uh, the, that law power. But what happened? When Jesus came, he died at the cross. He gave a law. You know, he read for us a law through preaching. When he was preaching, he gave us a law. And after that, he died at the cross. His blood is sprinkling and showing the beginning of a new testament. So are you going to follow this law of Jesus? or the law of Moses. So you have to ask yourself, where am I lying? And see what Paul is saying in verse two of uh, Galatians three. This only I would learn of you. Received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Between the two, how did you receive the Holy Spirit? By hearing of the, of the uh, by hearing, 
receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Did you receive the Holy Spirit by faith or by law? If you receive the Holy Spirit of God by law, then uh, you're lying to yourself because the Holy Spirit only came with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I'm going to heaven, but I will bring you the Holy Spirit who will abide with you forever. So the Holy Spirit came by faith. He did not come by law. Are you seeing this? So if you're trying to keep the law and you're saying, the law of Moses, the law of Moses. No, focus on Jesus. When you focus on him and you say, Jesus, I want to look upon you. I'm looking at the cross. I'm, I'm believing in nothing of my own way. I'm not believing in myself. I'm not believing in what I do. I'm not believing. I'm not trusting in anything. I'm not trusting in my prayers. I'm not trusting in my keeping of the law and the commands. I'm not trusting. I'm trusting on you at the cross. What you did for me. Exactly that. That's the only way you can be able to be saved. The other ways will lead you to hell, my friends. Let's continue. Let's continue. Galatians 3 verses, uh, verse 3. Listen to what Paul is saying to the people of Galatia. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit, you are now made uh, perfect by the flesh? You said that you started in the spirit. It is by the spirit of God that you are saved. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that you're saved. It is by faith that you're saved. Now you want to keep some law and say, uh, now we have to be made perfect by the flesh because the, the, the law is a representation of the flesh. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it, if it be yet in vain, he therefore that ministered to you, the spirit, and worketh miracle among you, does he... Uh, do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Does the Holy Spirit work in you through the law or through faith? You have to understand and ask yourself, where am I lying? Am I in the law of Moses trying to keep Sabbaths, trying to keep all these things, trying to uh, say, I, I want to be good in this way. I want to be good in that thing. Because, be because these guys, the seventh day, and if you're a member of the seventh day, I really... Uh, pray for you so much that God will open up your eyes. Keeping the law will not get you to heaven. Keeping all those things and saying, I want to do this. Moses told us this. Moses told me that. And, I, I, the, and the reason they also tell people to abstain from some foods is because that was back then in the time of Moses. They were told do not eat unclean things. Do not eat the pig. Do not eat this. Do not eat. But the Bible came and destroyed all that. Remember Peter, when he was just about to go and preach to Cornelius, he was sitting at the rooftop of, uh, of, of his house and uh, he saw a vision and, uh, and uh, he saw a vision of some, uh, some food, some unclean animals. And God told him, kill and eat. And then he started telling God, no, you see, nothing unclean has ever entered my mouth. And God told him, don't call anything that I've sanctified unclean. Kill and eat. Now, why was God trying to tell Peter that? To show him that everything which has been sanctified, don't call it unclean. And even these things that the, the seventh day, the SDA, they try to tell people, don't eat this, don't eat that. <laughs> Come on. You can eat anything as long as you pray. Those are the laws that they try to put in you that follow this law, follow this law. The law of Moses says, the law of Moses says, do this, keep the Sabbath, keep this commandment, keep... No, keeping the commandment will not get you to heaven. What gets you to heaven is believing in Jesus Christ. Believing in Jesus Christ. And you have to understand that 100% that it is by faith that you're saved, you know? It is by faith that you're saved. And I want to show you one verse here. Galatians 2, uh, verse 16. Hear what it says. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, you're not justified. The law can never justify you, can never give you salvation. Keeping these commandments can never give you any salvation. Listen to what he's saying. A man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Are you seeing what the Bible is saying? By the works of the law shall no flesh 
be justified. If you think your good works, your good deeds are going to get you to heaven because I keep the law. I don't eat some kinds of foods. I, I, I'm always absorbing the Sabbath. I'm always trying to do this. I'm always trying to do that. I'm, I'm so good in, in one area or another. I follow Moses all my life. I'm a Moses follower. It's not going to get you anywhere. You see, right now, I always tell people that uh, the difference between a saved person and an unsaved person is because we have a surety that we are going to heaven. Now, let me put it like this. If two people uh, are thieves and one is saved and another one is not saved and they go and rob a bank, the one who is saved is more safe than the one who is not saved. Why? Because when they are shot by the police and they die, the one who is saved will go to heaven and the other one will go to hell. Why? You may ask why. Because it is not by your works that you're saved. It is not by how good you are, how much of not stolen that you'll go to heaven. It is by who you believed. Are you looking at this? It is about who have you believed that you're saved. And the reason why you'll see a Christian will not go and steal in a bank it is because they have the Holy Spirit in them. The Holy Spirit is convicting them unto righteousness. He's telling them, this is not why you are saved. You are saved by grace. Jesus died for you at Calvary. You should not be going out there and stealing. The Bible tells us we have liberty now. We, are, we have liberty. We can do whatever we want. Right now, we have liberty. Look at Romans chapter 6. Verse 14, it says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under the grace. Sin, <laughs> sin has no dominion over you. You have uh, lied to someone, that has no dominion over you. Why? Because you are under the grace, you're not under the law. Are you seeing the point? But the reason why we don't go doing wrong things and doing this and this is because the Holy Spirit is in us and is teaching us how to live a godly life. And of course, we need rewards in heaven. Look at what verse 15, what he's saying. Romans 6, 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. There's no need for you to go and sin because you know you, are, you have the freedom, okay? You, you have the freedom, yes, but it does not mean that, no, let me go and steal from people because I know even if I die, I'm going straight to heaven. No, that's not the reason why we don't steal. That's not the reason why we don't lie. That's not the reason why we follow Christ. We follow Christ because we know he died for our sins and we are in liberty. We have all the liberty to do whatever we want. But, but salvation is a change of mind. Is an, an is you to understand. You see, if a salvation was all about some prayer that I go and do, some mantras that I go, maybe a switch, a button that I go and press, and then I say, whoop, voila, I am saved. Then all of us could be, this world could be as wicked as you could ever think. And Christians could be one of the most wicked people in the planet. Why? Because they know, even if I steal, even if I do what, I'm going straight to heaven. I have all the liberty. But salvation is a change of mind. You understand that Jesus died for your sins. He died for your sin. Literally, you're supposed to be on that cross. But he died for you so that you can be able to get salvation. And if he was there dying for you, if, if, you, if you're in school and uh, maybe you, you did something wrong, maybe you are late in uh, uh, going to class and uh, something happened and uh, maybe you beat someone and uh, that person or, or you did something which was wrong which you are supposed to be suspended and go uh, go home and somebody and when the teacher comes and asks, who did that awful thing that we saw there and you're just about to reveal yourself and say teacher is me your friend here dennis he says mm, sir it's me who did this and then your friend, you know very well he did nothing. It was you who was supposed to go uh, for a suspension at home. And he takes the blame and he gets the whips. And then he goes home and comes back. How are you going to be behaving towards him when he comes back to school? Anytime you hear him asking, oh, I don't have my bio pen. I think it, it has no ink. You'd be the first one to say, what you did for me, please get my bio pen. When you hear, oh, I don't know how I'll wash my shirt. Please, my brother, I have to wash your shirt. You did something so big for me. You'll not be going there and saying, um, you see, you did it. Now you can do it over and over again. No. 
That's exactly how salvation is. Because of understanding what Jesus did for you. That is why you don't go sinning and doing wrong things. And uh, you understand. That's why salvation is a state of mind, is an understanding. And the moment you understand what Jesus did for you, you'll no longer be pushed by these things. You'll no longer be pushed by other things. And when you understand, keeping the law will be so easy for you. You will love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, and you love your brother as Jesus commanded us and he told us, love each other. Love each other. When you see your brother is in a problem, love him or her. Tell them, I love you with the love of Christ. Help them where you can. Do all these things. Be an example of Christ. Be Have a good testimony of Christ. Now, with this, when you have love, that's why Jesus said, love is the greatest commandment. Why? Because when you have love, you will fulfill every other law by default. Are you seeing? So when you're trying to say, I'm keeping the Sabbath so that I can be good, you're behaving like a Pharisee. Why did Jesus always uh, uh, refuse and he said that you have, he, he always called Pharisees hypocrites. He was always against the Pharisees and they knew the whole law. They did according to the law, 100%. But why did Jesus call the Pharisees hypocrites? Because these people had not understood why, even in the first place, they are keeping the law. They thought it's just some buttons that they go and press. They thought it's just because I've kept the Sabbath, I've given to the poor, I've given to the needy, I've done this now, uh, God, now I'm good. No. It is a state of understanding. And that's why the Pharisees, they killed Jesus, whom they have been reading in the book of Isaiah, in the book of whatever, all this Old Testament, they have been reading about Jesus all through. He will come like a child. He will do this and this. He will be, um, he, he will, uh, be killed for your sins. He will do this and this. And they killed him. They did not even understand it was him. Why? Because the understanding of salvation was not in them. They only knew how to keep the laws. And that's what I'm telling you. If you are like this, uh, SDS, Seventh-day Adventists, who think that because I'm keeping the law, I'm so holy, I'm so holy, I'm going to heaven because I'm keeping a law, then you are like the Pharisees. You're like the Pharisees. You just have the law, but you don't even understand what the law means. Because salvation is a state of mind, a change of mind. What does the Bible talk about salvation? He says, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Hear what Paul is saying. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which you received, and wherein you stand, by which also you're saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. How do you keep something in memory? If you understand it. You can never put anything in your mind unless you have understood it. And the reason the Pharisees could not be able to understand anything is because they, I mean, they could not keep anything in their minds and the keep that Jesus was about to come is because they never understood it. Are you seeing the point? So it's very, very important for you to be able to see and ask yourself, am I being a Pharisee by trying to keep some laws, by trying to think that I'm doing all good, that I'm trying to think that I, I'm so special because I'm keeping all these things that Moses has spoken about. I'm keeping the, even if you wake up and say, I will keep the 613 laws by myself. I will do, I will make sure there's none which I break. Let me tell you, you're going straight to hell because like you have seen in the, uh, in Galatians 2, 16, it says that the law has never justified anyone. The law has never made anyone to go to heaven. Even look at a good example from Adam till Jesus came. People never used to go to heaven when they die. They used to go to Abraham's bosom. They used to go to Abraham's bosom. Why? Because the law could not justify anyone, could not take anyone to heaven. That's why you hear the story of Lazarus and the rich man. And they were somewhere where the rich man can see Lazarus and Lazarus can see uh, the rich man. So they were down here where the Abraham's bosom was and what is what was called paradise back then. But when Jesus came, what did he do? The Bible says Jesus went to set the captives free. And when Jesus rose, what happened? 
in the Matthew 50, I think it's 55 or something, yeah? Ma Ma Matthew towards the end, when Jesus arose, go and check that verse. The saints of God, saints who, are di who had died before, they were also saints walking. They were also seen walking in the streets of Jerusalem. People who had died before, they rose up with Jesus Christ. So Jesus went to set the captives free. And now Paul tells us to be absent from the body, it is, it is to be present with God. And right now, if you die, you go, your soul goes to heaven. And then it is there and it is alive, you know. And then later on, when the, the rapture will happen, your soul will come and mix up with your body and then we'll meet up with the God in the air with the other people who will be alive and things like that. So the Bible tells us, the Bible explains to us that the, the law has never saved anyone. The law has never taken anyone to heaven. So if you're trying to keep the law and if you're my brother, my sister out there in the Seventh Day Adventist, Please reconsider yourself and ask yourself, don't just follow something that you do not understand. Don't just follow it for the sake of, I am following. This is what our church talks about. These are our traditions. These are our things. Remember uh, Ellen G. White, she says that she's, you know, she prophesied and saw a vision about all those things that they believe. First and foremost, we know what the Bible tells us about uh, women leading church. <laughs> Go and see in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14 from verse 35, if I'm not wrong. Let me just read it for you. You see what the Bible talks about women leading in church. And if Ellen G. White is, is, the, is the leader of their you know, organization, uh, their religion, then you must really think so much. What does the Bible say about women leading in church? See, 1 Corinthians 14, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34, it says, Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. As also says the law. So people may say, no, this was for the law. No, the Bible says, as also says the law. So it means it is both in the time of grace and the time of the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. You see? So if the Bible is saying women should not lead in church, and uh, your highest prophet and the person who started this religion is a woman, then the whole religion is based on a lie. The Bible does not say that women should not uh, speak. They can uh, have WhatsApp groups. They can lead other women. They can lead, uh, you know, small, small gatherings. But they should not be a, a full, you know, the leader of the church, like they always say, a bishop or a pastor. No, it's not supposed to be like that. That's, that's a command from God. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not my story. I'm not uh, putting some things. And, of course, you can see from uh, Timothy. Timothy says, for Adam was first, uh, you know, Adam was not deceived, but Eve was deceived. And that's why God says, because of a lot of deception, think about it. If maybe Satan could have come and deceived Ellen G. Uh, Ellen G. White, uh, she could uh, probably remember what happened in the Garden of Eden, deception. And that's why the Bible is very keen about who you follow as your leader. So I'm not after saying that uh, Ellen G. White was uh, deceived or what happened, but uh, I rather believe in God than follow man. If the Bible tells me one thing, I will not follow another thing. The Bible tells, it says in the, in, the, in the book of Titus, if any man desires the office of a bishop, he must be a man of one wife, not a woman of one husband. Are you seeing this? That's why I think that's why in the society today, women are trying so much to be men and uh, trying to make men to be women. And, and it's a confusion. Do you think God is the author of confusion? No, God is not the author of confusion. So if you're there and you're trying to say, you see, Ellen G. White is the man now and this and this, my friend, follow the Bible. you rather die believing this Bible than die believing some guy. It's just the same way with Catholics. They'll say, oh, these are the traditions of the Catholic church. These are traditions of our Jehovah's Witness. These are the traditions of the SDA. Ask yourself, where did they come with these traditions? Go back to the time immemorial when they started that religion. What really happened? Go and read their history and see, does it really concur with the Bible? And if it doesn't, run, my friends, run.
run, run, and do whatever you can be able to do to be away from that. So I hope you've been able to understand that there's nothing to follow concerning these Sabbaths and keeping of these laws and ordinances and do not eat this meat, do not eat that. What uh, this SDA, Sabbath day, they, they always teach. Those, those are things that uh, you should not keep. Now your focus should be on Christ. It's all about what Jesus did for you, not about what you've done for yourself following some laws and keeping these commandments. Moses can never save you. Moses can never take you to heaven. Only Jesus can take you to heaven. Hope it's been a blessing to you. You can watch more videos uh, on YouTube, uh, Keith Mwoki, and also on Facebook, uh, Keith Mwoki. I always do a uh, live stream on Facebook. Uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m. East African time. And then I post the same video on YouTube all the time. So guys, you can always follow. Please subscribe if you're on YouTube. Subscribe so that you can as well get new updates all the time that these preachings is really important to be able to learn and also share to other people so that they, they you can edify them and they can learn as well, okay? So this is all about bringing God high, putting God up high, teaching people the true gospel of the Bible because it's diluted out there. Nowadays, you can really say who is saying the truth. It's really a confused world out there. But I hope it's been a blessing. Please share. And if you have not watched, please rewatch this video. It's really incredible. You'll be able to understand so much. God bless you and have a blessed time.